All right, here we are. I, you know, I noticed, <laughs> I noticed during that intro, I'm thinking, man, look at that fat guy doing that intro. <laughs> I was about 25 or 30 pounds heavier back when I did that. So, <laughs> it's basically the shot when I'm riding on the gantry there. I'm thinking, wow, that thing what is pretty tough. <laughs> Uh, it wouldn't be as impressive to see me ride on it now because I'm a little bit lighter. <laughs> anyway, uh, welcome one and all to another Gat and CNC Live. It's been a long time since we've done one of these. Uh, and the reason we're here tonight, as you know, probably I've got the, uh, the uh, good old demo board, I call it, set up back here. And it seems like uh, from the, the things I see in the Gat and CNC Facebook group, the number one issue people have is, you know, most people can put the machine together without any problem. It's when they get to the electronics. And not everybody. Some of them, you know, some people, that's their thing. But other people, it's they're like me, and it's not their thing. So tonight we're going to try to talk about... Uh, just kind of a basic setup, basic wiring, how to do the, you know, from the, where you plug it into the wall to the power supply to the, to uh, the, the drivers here. I've got, uh, got a few props here. I got a driver here and I've also, I figure I can hold this one up to the uh, camera and you'll be able to read it better than, than these over here. Cause they're all mounted sideways. But I will try to get the camera, you know, doesn't have a zoom, but I'll just pick it up and move it over there if somebody wants to see something, uh, how something's wired. But we'll go step by step uh, to help anybody out. So before we get started, let's see who all out there. I, I see a bunch of names, but I don't know of anybody that I'm seeing that really... Uh, really needs to uh, understand how this works but if you're out there and in, in, in the chat whether it be on Facebook or uh, YouTube put down in there that hey I'm building my controller and it doesn't have to be for Gat and CNC although that's mainly what I'm doing this for because I see that's the people that you know that keep asking the questions in in the Facebook group but, you know, if you're just building your own CNC, you know, whatever it is, it's uh, a lot of this stuff will still apply. So, all right, got uh, got a pretty good crowd of people out there. I guess I'll give a few folks some shout outs while I'm waiting to see if, uh, if we got any people that need some help out there. We got Paul Stewart. I'm going to run through these fast because there's a bunch of them. We've got Troy Pritchard, Jim Senecola, uh, Clyde CNC is here, Mr. Dave Krauss, <laughs> Dennis Nolan, uh, Jerry Brown. Time. <laughs> hope, you're doing, hope you're doing well, Jerry. I heard, uh, heard you got the Rona, so I hope you're... Uh, Hope you're hanging in there with that. Greg Euler, Dave Matthews, Steel Blade Woodworks. Um, I believe that's Joey, I think. I have trouble, you know, I have a hard enough time remembering people's names, but then when I have to try to put a name with the, the YouTube channel name, I always have problems. So I think that's who it is. If not, yeah, I apologize. Uh, Mark Lindsay, I think you, we've all heard of that guy. Wade is here. How you doing, Wade? Landis Stutes, Harnell Media. How you doing, Steve? John Thompson, Arlo, Marcello, Bart Pixel. Uh, Jerry says, oh, he's got the original Xylotex still. Good for you. I thought I was the only one that still had those things kicking around. Uh, but he's got the stepper online stuff. Okay. Well, this you may uh, 
course, you probably already know how to do this, but uh, anyway. Larry Duggar's here. How you doing, Larry? Hadn't seen you in a long time. Mary Mallory, Alan Kreifels. Yeah, Joey. Okay, good. Good to see you, Joey. Uh, Michael Bell. All right. I think we're called up. All right, so I'm going to pretty much, uh, Ryan's going to help me watch the chat because I'm really not going to be paying any attention to it. And I've got another camera set up over here that I'm going to turn on and it'll point to my demo board and we'll okay here we got a question good deal it says can you review the dip switch settings i don't fully understand the settings and half or full power what and why okay we can do that let me um Let me uh, switch cameras to start off because, like I say, y'all don't need to see what I look like. Let me get this other camera going here. And let's see if I can figure out these setups here. Which way? There we go. We'll do it like that. Okay. And just so I can't, uh, <laughs> just so. Uh, I won't be pointing with my little fat fingers. I got me a little pointer so it's I can more accurately point to something um, to, so you can see what you're talking about. But this is what I was talking about. I think I can hold this one up here. Now this, forget about what brand this is because I do not recommend this company at all. I bought a uh, four axis kit from them years ago in two of the drivers were DOA, uh, you know, dead on arrival. But the reason I'm using this as a prop is because it's, even though it's a DM542A, it's just like the DM542, I think these are T's. Yeah, these are T's. The, only, the big difference is the ones on the board don't have the heat sink. So they look a little thinner, but the, the actual driver is pretty much the same. Uh, so let's see. Paul wants to know about the dip switch settings. All right. Well, the dip switch, and again, if you look at this top section, that's going to be for the dip switches uh, one, two, and three. And that's where you set your peak uh, current, you know, to match what your uh, stepper motors uh, can handle. And then also the switch number four, which right above my finger there, it just has one line. It says SW4 off equals half current and on equals full, full current. And again, I'm not an electronic guy, but it's my understanding that if you set it to half, that when the uh, thing is in idle, it's not going it, to, it's going to kind of only use half the current. Uh, and if you leave it switched to full current, then it's full current all the time. And, I, and you'll sometimes get your stepper motors really, really hot if you're running it like that yeah it'll definitely keep the steppers uh cooler if you put it into uh the half yeah and also another reason why i wanted this prop is if i hold it like this i think you can see the setting of the dip switches and the reason i'm showing that is i've got this one in my hand set exactly the same as these four back here on this board and basically, for the settings, when you look at the little switch, up is off and down is on. Well, if you look, you can see I've only got two, seven, and eight. I'm having a hard time holding this to get it to focus. But yeah, I've only got three of them actually flipped in the on position. So... I've got 
for one, two, and three to set the current like this one, it is off, on, off, which would be on this particular driver, and I'm pretty sure it's the same on these. Uh, off, on, off would be 3.32 uh, peak current is what I have those running at. The other dip switches, four through, well, four for the current, I've got that off. So that's going to be at, at the half current that we talked about. And then I have five and six is off, seven, eight is on. So it's off, off, on, on. And when I look at that, off, off, on, on, according to the little, and where I'm getting that, I'm, I think you guys know what I'm talking about. It's right here. There's a chart that shows what it's supposed to be. So off, off, on, on is for 1,600 uh, pulses per rev. Okay. Hey, Dave. Yes. The uh, a, a reason to go back to Paul's question, um, there is actually a reason to keep them, keep it turned on for some machines though, right? Like, uh, like if it was a, a belt driven machine or what have you, because it's going to, when you're, when it's standing still, it will, you know, you're not going to be able to move the gantry around. Then in that, the, wouldn't that be your case for leaving it on? Uh, well, it might be, I don't, I'm not that familiar with the belt driven machines, but yeah. that would kind of make sense to me. Yeah. Cause it's going to hold the, the, it's going to hold steady at that spot. And when uh, I know at least on my laser and such, you have a button that you can push to, um, to release the motors. And I think that's what it does is it kind of, it, it just lets the motors freewheel so that you can move it around and then it'll lock it back down. Um, when the, uh, when power, you know, when amperage is applied to it. So. Okay. Um, I was reading, there's a big comment right here. Let me, uh, oh. Wade says the biggest problem I had when trying to get Mach 3 to work is that I had a slave to Y and couldn't get it to home. Finally realized when I referenced a combination, you need to have a set up the same way as Y for homing. But other than home, other than homing is called Y is controlled by A. Took me forever to figure out that problem. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I don't think I, I'm going to say no, Paul. Again, I'm not probably the right one to answer that question. But I think the full current just means that when they're running, they're at full. And when they're at idle, they're at half. Yeah. So I don't think you're going to get any extra boost of power. by. Yeah, it's only, it's only concerning when it's sitting at idle. And, and nothing, no data is coming through to it. Yeah. Okay. Art Day says, I need info on a USB bomb. Well... The one I have, if you look behind me here, and I'll get my little trusty pointer, the one I have right here, this, because I see so many questions on the Gat CNC Facebook group, this is currently set up probably the most simple way it could be. Now, I know that there is a USB breakout board, and I'm going to show it here. Let's see if I got it turned the right way where you can read it. But this is a this is a very popular one. And it's got the uh, where you connect the USB cable right there. Uh, and you also, I believe, if I remember correctly, you have to put. Uh, I was thinking it was 24 volts you had to run. Because I'm trying to think of what that power supply is. It's so, been so long since I've done put this board together. I've forgotten what that is. But I, I thought it was 24 volts. I can check it with a, a meter. But anyway, 
I have, we've already done a couple of Gat and CNC lives with this uh, exact board. And I was just talking to Ryan before we went live. Uh, I know this is a real popular one, but I don't like it as well as these other kind. And one reason that I don't, and it's if you're brand new to CNC, you wouldn't know any different. But I'm not. And when you get used to doing something, uh, you expect it to, to do it. So let me, uh, let's see if I can work all these buttons here. Okay, here's um, Mach 3 I've got set up over here. And one thing that I like about the these uh, other boards, and by the way, if you look, you can see that there's a parallel cable connected to it. So this one you could use with an older computer that has a parallel port, if you can still find one like that. Or in my case, I don't use parallel port anymore, but I have a USB uh, UC100 motion controller running to that uh, parallel cable. It's it's right down here on the floor. You can't see it. I'll uh, see if I can grab it and hold it up here. Well, let me get the uh, switch things. Okay, so there you can see this is what I've got. The black cable is a going to a USB port on this computer. And then this is the UC100 motion controller. And then that goes to the parallel cable, which then comes to this board. So that's another reason I like these boards is you can use them with a USB controller like this, or if you have one of the old ones, you can use it like that. But now let me show you one of the reasons I really like these other ones better. And that is, now I've done lost my, there we go. So many buttons to push. Uh, let me flip this on back here. I don't think it's on. Okay, now I'm going to jog these. If you look down below right here on the very bottom of this board, you'll see I have the stepper motors mounted through the back. And I have, um, there's the X. I got a little piece of masking tape on them so that you can see them spin. So there's the X. Notice when I do the Y, the A. And actually, I see, I see there's a setting wrong now that I'm looking at this because they're, they're spinning in opposite directions. And for a gat and CNC, they should spin the same way. So let me see if I can fix that real quick. Uh, let's see. Now let's see if they... Uh, yeah, yeah now, they're, now they're going the same direction. Um... And then, of course, page up and page down. We'll move the Z. Now, here's the thing that I can do with this breakout board that I can't do with that other one that I just showed, the USB thing. I don't really understand why you can't do it, but they will not do it. And that is, if I move the X, and then I push the Y, and then I push the Z, you can move all the axes simultaneously when jogging and you cannot do that with that usb board um, now you might say well that's not a big deal big deal so you have to jog one and then stop but if you've been doing this a long time like i have you're used to taking your hands and hitting those keys and jogging from one corner diagonally across to the other corner and it's really nice to be able to hit them uh, at the same time. So uh, that's one reason why I like that board. Um, 
All right. Is there anybody out there that's just getting ready to start wiring this thing and wants me to go through the different connections? Let me take a look here and see. Rob Schuster made the end. Yeah, wait, it says 12 to 24. I'm, I'm trying to remember. I'm thinking that's a 24. And by the way, just uh, let me flip this back like this. Well, that's not what I want. Let's do this one. <laughs> there we go. We'll get this one nice and big. This is from when I had, this setup is kind of from when I had the, that other USB breakout board on because even though that power supply is lit up and you can see the power is coming in here through the switch, it's going up here to a, uh, a terminal block and then it's bringing power off to here. This is a, actually a 60 volt power supply it's got the nice little knob so that you can adjust it uh, but then it also has another set of hot wires coming off and going to power that other power supply however if you look close there's nothing coming out of that power supply going to the breakout board or anything else it's not even being used in this particular setup i just didn't remove it because then if i ever go back and put this one back on it's already mounted there but it's not it's not even being used for for this one. Uh, let's see. Paul's got a question. Okay. Well, I see Jerry Brown saying, is that two power supplies on your board? Yes, it is. But like one of them's just there for decoration right now because... Because that one right there, I'm not using at all. And you know what? Let me look at my, let me put my glasses on, see if I can find. I think it's on the side here. Okay, yeah, it is a, uh, that's what I thought. It is a 24 volt power supply. But like I said, I got power to it but it's not even being used to power anything uh, currently. You also see some other terminal blocks that I had here that there's no wires going to. It's just for different configurations that I use this board for. And instead of taking everything off, I just leave it on there and just don't use it. All right, let's see what Paul's question is. Does each stepper need its own power supply? I've noticed some of the kits you can buy have a power supply for each stepper. Uh, it depends on what size power supply is coming with them. A lot of times, uh, and I, I'm pretty sure I'd have to go back and look at it, but I'm pretty sure that the stepper online kit that I uh, have links to on my website, uh, I think they're... It uses two 36 volt power supplies, I believe, uh, or maybe they're 48. But anyway, it it comes with two of them, and you you just really need to make sure you've got enough power to handle everything that you're you're going to do. For this one, you know, and especially this is just a demo board, so this is a 60 volt one, and it's got the knob, so I set it for 48 volt, and it can run all four of these. Uh, if I was going to put this on a machine, I would probably get another one of these. And that's how I have my Gatton CNC set up now is I have two power supplies. Uh, I can't remember whether they're 36 or 48. But anyway, they're two identical power supplies. And I have one of them powering the X and the Z. And then I have the other one powering the Y and the A. And I always recommend, you know, running the Y and A on the same power supply. That way, if it goes out and one of them stops moving, they'll both stop moving if they're on the same Y. You're going to have a big problem if you have them on different power supplies and then one of the power supplies fails and only one side stops moving. So, Let's 
Let's see here. Yeah, most of the stuff that with the size machines we're running, you know, one powers of life for all your um, stepper motors or stepper drivers is plenty. Yeah, if you get if you get a big enough, you know. Yeah. Like I said, some of the kits they sell, they they'll sell a smaller power supply, but then they'll give you two of them. Yeah. You know, with, with yeah, I'm looking at the uh, stepper um, online right now, and just some of the kits that they have. And it looks like that uh, they mainly break it into individual uh, power supplies when you get up into the NEMA 34s and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Christian has a question, I think. Is it okay to just double up the Y connection to the board versus using the A as a slave? Uh, I know some people do that with that other uh, USB. If, and again, like I said, some of this stuff that we're talking about is all a repeat. <laughs> but it's been probably over a year when I did, uh, when I first set up this demo board. And I had, this was one of the first boards that I put on it. And we did a live. And then I found out after the live because i had it wired the same way i wasn't using the a on here i was using uh the y and a and just had them wired into the y on this thing and that works but then i found out that the driver that i had for this board the i think it's called r r n r or something i tried a different one and then i got it to work correctly where when you hook the y to the Y and the A to the A, then it would work. And again, if you go 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 to my YouTube channel and look under, I, I've tried to organize everything in playlists. So if you go to look in the playlist, Gat and CNC Live, uh, you'll be able to find there's two videos. Uh, I think they're back to back. Because uh, I think we did one one Wednesday and then one the following Wednesday, uh, kind of did an update to that one. Let's see here. Kenneth says the kit you mentioned does come with two power supplies. I asked for a wiring diagram, and they gladly sent it. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, one thing, like I said, I, I'm just throwing this out there. If anybody's getting questions, I'm happy to show, you know, close up or, you know, tell you what each wire goes from here to there and what it, what it's doing. But we've done lives on this, this very same thing before. And really you can get some wire wiring diagrams if you ask for them sometimes when you get the kit their documentation is a little uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> well how shall i be black black to say it, you know uh, but sometimes it's not the best but uh but it's really it's really pretty simple and that's and that's another reason why i wanted to do one of these tonight is even though we've we've talked about this probably more than just two or three times. Uh, if there's anybody that needs help getting this stuff wired, um, I won't try to help them get going because it's not rocket science. Y'all have heard me say that a million times and I will keep on saying it. I am, I am not a uh, electronics guy at all, but uh, when, uh, when Xylotex quit making that uh, little box they were making, which was fantastic, I think. You know, I still have some that work. Jerry mentioned he's still using one. Um, you know, I decided I needed to uh, to up my game a little bit and figure out this stuff so that I could be able to show other people. And that's and that's why I have this board. I don't need this board right here. It's not <laughs> it's not doing me any good. But I have it just for people who say, "Hey, can you show me how to." how to do this, you know, it's not very pretty because you can see it's not organized, but you can see where all the wires uh, go. 
But uh, let's see. Dave says. Yeah. Dave had a comment. He has 36 and 48 volt kits. 48 is a newer kit. There are advantages to 48. Yeah. Yeah. I think if I was, I don't know what price difference is, probably not much because, you know, power supplies in general aren't that expensive anyway. So um, I yeah, would, my, I would opt to get the 48, the one with a 48 volt. My, my gun is run with 48 volts. Yeah. And I, I look at it based on the electrical uh, um, theory behind it, which is that the even though I have a I have a 500 watt um, 48 volt power, uh, power supply, uh, it's pushing. It takes less amps to get get there with the 48 volts than it would 36 or 24 or 12. So it's uh, it, it you. You don't have to worry. The, the wires can be smaller <laughs> and get the same job done. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen anybody ask for it, but just in case somebody comes back later after the fact and watch, watch, watches this uh, live, I'll go through just real quick, and if anybody's got any questions, they can stop me. Uh, but just to uh, show you how the wire works, I mean, it's it's pretty easy to wire up power supply. You've got your, your black, white, and your ground. And you can see here I've come off the switch. This switch, if anybody wants to see the other side of that, I can show you. But it's just a rocker switch with the little light. And then it's got the plug for like a, your power cord for any computer type thing. Plugs right in there. Uh, but uh, I also have close-up pictures of of this stuff if anybody wants to see it exactly how that's wired uh but you know just coming over here to put ac power to the power supply and you see i'm coming off with this is just regular uh i bought a box of uh they called it speaker wires what it's called on the outside of the box but it's just black and red wire you know in the in the little plastic or whatever that white stuff is so i'm bringing it over here to a uh terminal block so that I can split it up and have my ground on one side, the uh, positive on the other side. And then you can see from, from each of those, here I'm pointing with my stupid finger instead of the little pointer thing. And for each one of these, you can see there's a, a red wire coming off and it's going to, and I'll show you on this thing here, it's it's going right to here. Let's see. Can you see that, Ryan, where I'm pointing? Yeah. You've got, you've got the DC uh, ground and then the DC, uh, I guess that's supposed to be power there, whatever that symbol is. So you've got uh, the black right here to the ground. I'm hoping you can see that. And then the, the red one there. And these plugs also, by the way, folks, these, you don't know, these things come off. So it's really easy to put the wires in these things. And then when you get them wired correctly, then snap them back in like that. Okay. The, on that same plug, you got A plus, A minus, B plus, B minus. And, and that is also down here in the little power section. And you can see again, I've got some of this. Uh, cheap wire that I bought and it has the uh, four uh, whatever you call it anyway it's four wire it has yellow black blue and red and those are just you see I'm sneaking through this hole through the board and they're basically where I've got the stepper motors up under here these wires just basically go to another one of these little terminal blocks and then the, the wires from the motors are hooked to the other side of the terminal block. So that's uh, connecting those. So in these pairs, uh, I've got the red and the blue is one pair, which was the A. And then the B pair is the black and uh, yellow, at least the way I've got it set up here. When I step around back here and look, 
the stepper motors, a lot of times you'll get stuff and it won't always have the same color wires. For example, these stepper motors have red, green, black, and blue. So in this case, the uh, I guess it's the red. Let me make sure I'm saying that. Yeah, red and the blue is one pair, and then the black and the green is the other pair. But you do have to determine which are which. And we, I know we've talked about that on on this these lives before. Is you take your stepper motor without any of the wires touching each other, you should be able to grab the shaft and turn it by hand, and you can feel the little detents in there. And then if you take a pair of wires and touch them together and try to turn it and they lock up, you know that those two are one coil. And then when you touch the other two, for example, the way these are, you should be able to take the black and the green and touch those together. And then you would feel that lock up or you touch the red and what I say, the other one was red and blue. And that's how you determine your pairs. So that's that's pretty much it. And like I said, it's really simple to wire up a driver with the power from the power supply and the stepper motors. And, you know, I've heard Dave Matthews say this all the time. You basically do one and then you do it three more times because they're all the same. You're going to do them exactly the same. Now for this other plug over here, let me pull up a picture. I think I can pull up a picture that will show that better. Let's see if I can find it. See, this is it here. Okay, yeah, here's a good here's a good shot. Okay, so we'll, well, yeah, there we go. Okay, so the, the plug on the, on the left is the one I was just talking about. So you can see the yellow and the black, blue and the red, and then you see what looks like a little heavier gauge uh, that's red and black on the, the two slots on the right side of that first plug. And that's coming off the power supply. Then you look at the on the far right and you you'll notice that there's a uh a little plug with two things i'm not even using that but on the what would be the top of the driver you notice that there is a little loop a little jumper that's running from the pulse five volts to the direction five volts so you take a little piece of wire and put a jumper right there. And then you also notice I'm pointing with my pointer at the screen. I know y'all can't, <laughs> can't see that. But also you have a red wire that's going to go up to the breakout board. Um, the blue wire right next to the in between that loop, it's going to go up to the breakout board. And then the yellow wire is also going to go up to the breakout board. So you've got... Uh, your pulse uh, where you've got your loop and that red wire, it's going to go up to the breakout board and connect into, let me see if I can read this on this board. Uh, it should um, be pulse and direction. Yeah, it's it's the wires are covering it up, but it'll say pulse and direction. So you got to put, uh, like I say, you're going to have three wires because you got that little loop on one, but they go up to that. Let's see if I got a picture. I believe I do. Of, uh... Yeah, I find that rather interesting, Dave, because on my, uh, with the Raspberry Pi and the other Arduino based uh, controllers, you do use that enable um, ports on that uh, driver as well. Now, let's so see. instead of three wires coming out, you have four. I'm trying to find a good picture, and I don't, I don't have one. 
with that's a close uh, I got yeah I don't have I don't have a picture of that for some reason but yeah just but I mean it's clearly marked you've got you've got X Y Z and A and then you're gonna have pulse and direction so you just put those wires where they go and like I said that one is is looped um Oops. Now where'd I look? Lost my picture. There we go. Yeah. Anyway, here's also, if you couldn't see it before when I was holding it up, there's a better shot of the uh, dip switches too. And again, like I said, you can see all of them are off. One, three, four, five, and seven are off, and just two, six, and eight are on. Ah, uh, let's see. Uh, Mary has a question. I have shielded wire from the drivers to the motors. Which end do I mount? To the other ground i'm not sure i'm saying that correctly it's the silver strands um shielding yeah i'm not sure i don't know that it makes any difference which end but you don't from what i understand you only want to hook up one end i don't have that and i've never had it you know i see people talk about that all the time and i've never had any kind of issues with noise or stuff like that but from what i understand you get uh what's called a ground loop if you try to ground it on both ends so you should only put it on one if i'm not i believe it's it. supposed to be on the end where the uh um the drivers and such are and uh it's say you can ground all of them at one spot if i'm not mistaken i have shielded wire on my machine but i i don't just like you said i i don't have it I don't have it grounded anywhere. Yeah. I don't I, want to I, anymore. Like I said, I've never uh, never used that. Well, I won't say I've never used the shielded cable, but when I have, I've always just cut it off flush with, and not, not put it to anything. And I've never had any issue with um, any kind of inter interference or noise or stuff. Not to say that you won't, because I know people do, but... Uh, that's just something I've never, never done. So what we're saying, Mary, is to run it, run it as it is first, and see if you have a problem. <laughs> and if you do, then we'll figure it out. <laughs> but you probably won't have a problem. Yeah, but like I said, I don't think it's going to matter which end you connect to a ground, because you're only connecting that one end. If there's anybody out there that's uh knows for sure uh go ahead and pipe up in the chat but i don't i don't think it's uh i don't think it's gonna matter i'm still trying to figure out these silly buttons uh let's see kenneth's got a yeah. raspberry pi thing would you just swap out the controller uh essentially yes Kenneth, uh, it, it, you're, all the wires coming from the Raspberry Pi are going to go to the uh, um, to the stepper drivers the same uh, and such like that. Uh, the, the difference that you're going to see is, one, you're going to need a 5-volt power supply for the Raspberry Pi. Um, and you're plugging your, well, essentially you can plug your, your monitor and your uh, keyboard and stuff right into the Raspberry Pi. So um you don't necessarily you, you don't have to have any other computers to deal with uh, that's how i run mine is i i run it as a standalone um so and it works really really well I'm, i've really enjoyed having it that way but yeah essentially with the hat that you can get from protonier um it just clips right onto the top of the raspberry pi and you you run the external drivers from that. Okay, I see Wade says he 
grounds at the controller. Uh, Dave says he's got his tied together in the controller. It would, to me, I guess it, logistically, it would make more sense to tie them all together at the box instead of, you know, somewhere else where they're all scattered out. I think there's actually a reason to have them in the box connected, but I don't know what that reason is. Yeah, he is. He's that saying, comment was no help whatsoever to anybody. <laughs> he said easier to do it in a controller because the motor ends are all over the machine. Yeah, they're all scattered out everywhere. But if you if you do it, they all come together inside the the controller. So uh, that would be the the way to do it before. Okay, Ernest says he didn't have a problem with uh, EMO until he got a VFD. Um, yeah, I've got a VFD, but mine is mounted on the wall far enough away. Uh, and like I said, I, I've just never hooked, you know, never, never grounded those things. And I'm not even sure I'm using the the stranded wire. I probably, I probably am because uh, I got a big box of that. But I was used to just take the strands and just cut them all flush and not not do anything. So Mary says, so I ground them into the ground on the controller. Yeah, that would be that would be the easier place to uh, to do it. Uh, Kenneth also asks if there's any limitations to the Raspberry Pi uh, 3D carving or fourth axis. Uh, so far, um, I have not had had any limitations with it. I but to be um, fully transparent, I never do any 3D. Um, any 3D stuff because I don't have uh, V-Carve, uh, but uh, they're, they're, I've had no problems whatsoever. Uh, the fourth axis, like uh, I, I'm thinking, you maybe you're talking about a rotary, possibly, um, and uh, you just have to stay tuned. Um, we'll see about that one. We're working on it. Okay, one other thing I want to do here. Let's see, how long have we been on here? About 50 minutes or so. Um, oh, wow. I want to uh, show something else that, that's always a, uh, a little confusing, I think, for some folks, as soon as I can figure out how to, <laughs> how to get the, hit the right button. Okay, here's Mach 3. That's what I was trying to show. Uh, now remember I mentioned earlier on the on the drivers I currently have these set uh, the last four dip switches five six seven eight is off off on on which is for 1600 pulse per rev okay now what I want to do is and this is forgotten folks here uh, may not apply if you've got some other kind of machine but uh, uh, what I want to show here is if you have, uh, I'm trying to look. Yeah. Okay. That says 3,200. Okay. Because the Gatton CNC uses half inch diameter, 10 threads per inch, five start lead screws. That means that there are two revolutions to move one unit. And in our case, most most people are using inches. So to move one inch, it's going to take two revolutions. So that is why the steps per right here where you see my, my little mouse wiggling around here, that is always going to be set for twice as much as whatever the steps you have on your driver. So if you're running, if you have your dip switches set at 1600 in Mach 3, it needs to be 3200. If you have your dip switches set for 3200 in Mach 3, it needs to be 6400. It always needs to be twice as much as whatever your dip switch setting is because it takes two revolutions to move one inch with those lead screws. And a lot of people think, you know, think it's supposed to be the same, and then they, 
they set it the same and then when they go to run a a, a test park that's six inches it comes out three inches <laughs> so uh that's why you always have to get, set the and it doesn't you know there's lots of different ways you can set it i use 1600 and 3200 in mach 3 1600 on the drivers 3200 in mach 3 you don't have to use that you can use whatever you want but you just have to make sure that if you're running a gatton with uh five star lead screws two revolutions per unit it needs to be double whatever uh that is and hey dave yeah I'll, I'll be right back i'm gonna go i got something that i can show uh kenneth and rob about the raspberry pi uh rotary so i'll be right back okay um let's see let's see uh, hey there's poot how you doing jim good to see you uh yeah let me show you something else too i don't ever do this but i know uh some people like to when they're when they're doing their wiring they like to set it on a on a bench and wire everything up make sure they get it right and then move it to their machine i never do that because i figure it's just as easy to work at on it on the machine as it is sitting on a bench and plus just because i wire it correctly on a bench doesn't mean i'm not going to screw something up when i change to move it and put it on the machine but if you do put it on a bench and we're going to pretend this demo board is a bench uh, what I'm going to do is, and I think you'll be able to see this. I'm going to go, uh, first I'm going to zero the X. So I've got it, I've got it zeroed out up here. Then I'm going to go to an MDI command. And what I want you to watch is watch the stepper motor that says, uh, that has the X first. Let me get it. Let me jog it around a little bit if I can trying to bump it till it's ah, trying to get it where that tapes sticking straight up right here okay it's basically sticking straight up so then what you can do is and this is how you can check to make sure you've got your steps per right in Mach 3 is you can come over to this MDI command and I can say X1, and I'm going to just put a speed slow enough that I can watch it. I'm just going to put five inches a minute. So if you watch that, the tape on the X right there, when I hit OK, well, why did it go so fast? X1, F. I hit something right. Okay, let's try that again. Because that moves fast, you couldn't even see it. Well, come on, Dave. X, one. Now it's not doing nothing. Let me try it again. It worked good in rehearsal. <laughs> oh, it's not moving at all. What have I done wrong here? Oh, I know why it's not because I didn't re zero it. So it was already at one, dummy. Okay, now let's come back. Okay, it's zeroed again. Let's go X, 1, F, 5. Well, I don't know why it's moving way too fast. Cause let me try X, 1. Uh, F, 1. Oh, I got to zero this out again. It's still going fast. What in the world? You broke it. Yeah, I broke it. Um, <laughs> all right. 
Well, let me let me see if I can do it this way. I'll set the feed rate way down. I'm just trying to get it to go slow enough so you can see it. Oh, I got a zero this again, Dave. Ah, I can't get it to do it for nothing. But anyway, if you look close, it is rotating two times. Now, when I was out here earlier today, I was playing around with this. Let's do the Y and see what what we get let's do why uh we're gonna put four f5 well and again it's still moving too fast i don't know why this thing is something, Try point about, five. something about the feed rate oh, I don't know. When I was out here today doing it, it worked every time I did it. So I don't know what's. All right. So let's go X1 F.2. We'll make it really slow. <laughs> it still moves so fast you can't see it, but it's spinning twice. But anyway, the way I was doing it earlier, you could sit here and have it set real slow. And we'll count the number of times the tape turn. If you tell it to go four, it should turn eight times because it's having to move eight revolutions to move that four inches. Oh, Rob says try G1. I wasn't using that before, but let's let's try and see. Uh, That, that might be the trick, Rob. There it goes. Yeah, it's moving. Yeah, yeah, now you can see it's moving really slow. So this is what I was talking about. Yeah, I guess it was because the last thing I did was a G0. Uh, so, yeah, you can see the counter counting down. And you can also, now it's moving slow. It's probably moving a little too slow. <laughs> but you can sit here and count how many times the, how many revolutions it does by the tape. Or you could put you some kind of little foam circle thing or something with a line on it. It'd probably be a little easier to tell. I just got some tape stuck on there. But anyway, my point was that you can see that you're in the ballpark because if you have, Say, for example, you have your driver set at 1600 and you think, oh, well, it's supposed to be the same in Mach 3 and you put them in there. You're going to see that when you tell it to go one inch, it's only going to turn one time when that means it only went a half inch. So you don't have them set up correctly. All right. Is there any other questions, anything else I need to touch on? While we got this thing here. Yeah, I had that set. Oh, I know why it sets so slow now. It's because the I had I slowed the feed rate way down. Oh, let me just reset. Yeah, that's why it's crawling. Yeah, that thing's moving slower than progress. That's right. <laughs> yeah, there it is. So it stopped back at the spot where it was after turning two revolutions. All right, let me uh, see here. I don't even know how to get back on here now. You're out of practice, Steve. I know. I know. It's not like I do a live stream every morning. <laughs> uh, let's let's get a equal size here. All sure. right. So, is there any other questions anybody has? If not, we'll uh, we've been at it an hour or so. So, um, just to, while while we wait for that, I'll answer. Uh, 
uh, Kenneth and uh, Rob Schuster's uh, talking about the Raspberry Pi stuff and rotary. So um, what you need for a rotary with Raspberry Pi or any Arduino setup is one of these guys. Uh, barely could. Yeah. Let's see if we can get it in there. But this oh, is a yeah. this is a rotary yeah. switch um, from a uh, company called uh, Designs by Phil, and uh, he makes a, a an Arduino based uh, controller that he was making to or is making to uh, replace like the um, uh, the boxes from. Uh, Inventables and stuff like that for the X cards, and so what this little guy does is uh, um, your input goes in this side, and then you have an output A, and then output B. So you can you can actually run this thing in a couple different configurations, um, but you can so you can run one driver in here and then have it go out to two different, um, or I'm sorry. You run it into here and then run it out to two drivers, or you can run it in and go out to one specific driver. And then you have this one here, which goes to a rotary. And uh, so you have just a little rocker switch on top there and uh, to switch it back and forth from normal operation and to a rotary. Um, I was planning on using this for the dual axis uh, Gatton, uh, but I didn't think about how this switch actually functions. So I was actually going to use this one on the, on my Gatton, but uh, um, it it didn't work for that. So I'm going to be using it for something else. But uh, but yeah, so you you wire it up into the uh, um, into the stepper drivers. And it'll uh, it'll act as that rotary switch. You'll probably have to do a separate. Well, you will definitely have to do a separate uh, configuration file uh, for Gerbil to uh, to match whatever the diameter of the uh, thing is that you're doing. But uh, yeah, but that little guy right there would fit would fit the bill. So. It was designed by Phil. If he has any more on there, he calls him. Uh, he calls his controller the demon. So if you look on his website, look for the demon controller section, and uh, you probably can order one from there. Yeah, and I wanted to point out to uh, Dave Matthews uh, pointed out that there's uh, some pretty good wiring diagrams. Just like just like what we've uh, talked about here uh, in the Gatton CNC Facebook group, and really, there's a ton of you know when you look on YouTube, you know, like if you're building a Gatton CNC, unless you're finding a video that somebody who's built the same machine, you know, it you always kind of wonder, well, it's, you know. Cause there's a lot of videos out there and I know whenever I'm looking, I'm like, well, it's exactly like what I'm trying to do except for this one piece. So I wonder, how, you know, if that's, so it's kind of hard to find one that's exactly like yours, but this is pretty, you know, kind of a, you know, this is about as plain Jane as you can get as far as the setup, the DM 542 drivers. There's a lot of other different kinds of drivers, but they're all pretty much wired up the same way. Um, yeah, like I said, this is a DM542A. Those are DM542Ts. There's, they put a different letter on the end of them for some reason, but uh, as far as wiring them up and the dip switches and stuff, they're pretty close to identical, I think. This setup I like because, you know, I saw, showed you it's a really plain Jane uh, uh, breakout board uh, it's got a parallel thing where you can you know because you can still get the parallel cables it's just harder to find a computer with the parallel port but you can if you have one you can run it with parallel or if you don't have one you can get a uc100 motion controller which that's the treat cheaper version 
they're uh, I don't know what they're about 110 bucks I think and I've got like three of them I love them they they work great they're there's no problem getting them to communicate with each other you plug it in and put the driver in and it go like this one just to give you an idea this one right here that I'm using tonight when I came out here today to to check and make sure I had all this stuff set up I thought well I don't have my UC100 out here, so I'm going to have to go into my Gatton and steal that one off of there. And then I thought, well, wait a minute. I just took another machine out of the shop, and I folded it. It had the old Xylotex box, and this was all connected to it. So I had another UC100 just folded up and up under that workbench under there. So I went and got it. Brought it down here, plug it in. Well, now, as soon as you plug it in, it notices that the firmware is different. So it will take about 10 seconds to redo that. And now it's, you know, now it's working fine. And it, it's lit up, uh, communicating. When, you know, it's got the green light that shows you're getting power. And then the blue light is the one to show that it's communicating properly. But they're just so... Uh, user friendly and you know they're just no problem I, that's why that's why i got three of them you know and if you're going to use uc c and or no yeah uc c and c software you got to have either one of those or the uc 300 or the uc 400 um uh, if you look on there, so I've seen some people will look and go, and the UC, the UC, uh, the UC, <laughs> Jack. Like for a second if it was my dog. We <laughs> wanted out a while ago, so while you were busy talking, I thought, well, I'll let him out because it is warm in here. It's a little cooler outside. But see, then he does that. But, uh, but anyway, if you go to the, the website to look at the UC CNC software, you might look at it and go, man, it's cheaper than Mach 3 because Mach 3 is 175. I think Mach 4 is a couple hundred. This is like 60 bucks. Now, I'm, I'm, I hadn't looked lately. It might be more than that now, but it was around 60 bucks. But what they don't really tell you is that if you pay 60 bucks and get it, you just got to, you pay 60 bucks to get a demo version because it's not going to work without one of those other components. Uh, yeah, and by the time you put pay 110 for that and the 60, now you're about the same as Mach 3, but you're able to run um, USB instead of parallel port. And I run that one all the time now. My GAT and I run with my laptop. I just make sure you know. I, I always I know I always say I eh, don't use a laptop. But I always tell people that because I know most people don't take the time or don't know how to turn off all that power saving junk, the Wi-Fi, all that stuff. They're, they'll work fine as a dedicated computer if you keep your, you know, keep your virus protection turned off, to keep your Wi-Fi turned off, don't hook it up to the Internet, and then turn off all those power saving things. And laptops have a lot of them because... They run on batteries, so, you know, when the batteries get slow, those power-saving things try to kick on. So, Yeah, Dave has a good point. Uh, make sure you get a real UC100. The Chinese yeah. solar ones are fake. Yeah, and the best, the best thing to do is buy them from, uh, I think the thing on Amazon is CNC Drive, or maybe it's CNC number four PC, one of those two. But anyway, you can always spot the fakes because they're like 50 or 60 bucks. But the real deal is I should probably check to see what they are. I was pulling it up. Um, they used to be 110. Thereabouts. Yeah, CNC drive, UC100 USB motion controller. Yeah, I'm, I'm on their website, CNC drive. And I don't see a price. 
but you can get them on Amazon. Just make sure if you don't think you're getting a deal because you're not. If you think, oh man, look at this half off. No, you're just getting a dud. That's what you're getting. It, you know what? Right here. Let me let me share this. C4 PC. Yeah, let me share this. Uh, or maybe I already am. Am I sharing my screen? Okay, here. Look in this red print right here. It says, be aware that counterfeit fake UC100 motion controllers are sold on eBay, Alibaba, Banggood, and Amazon. The fake devices will not work with our software. Please follow this link for more information. And he's not kidding. They won't work. It's just somebody ripping you off for 40 or 50 bucks or whatever they are. But the real deal, did you find a, a price, Ryan, or were you? Uh, it, the one that you just pulled up um, is showing up as a uh, 120 Okay, well they've gone up a little bit then, I guess, because they used to be used to be around 110, 115 or something. But uh, well worth the money. Really easy to, uh, yeah. If you get one of those fake ones, you just got a fifty dollar paperweight. Darren wants to know what controller do I have with have on my Avid CNC. I bought all their stuff. Um, I started out and I was just going to get. It's crazy. I started out, I was just going to get the machine, the mechanical stuff. And I thought, I know how to wire stuff and I'll build a table for it. And then I thought, nah, I, I, I don't want to have to build a table for it. I'll get the table frame too. And then I just kept on and on. Next thing you know, I. I bought everything from them. But they, yeah, I bought the, the, you know, I got two, two boxes because mine has the controller on one box and the VFD for the plug and play spindle in another box, which is uh, 230. Uh, so, but my uh, Avid, they use a, um, warp nine smooth stepper inside their control box or at least the one i have and they tried to sell me mach 4 and i said nope <laughs> don't need it already spent i i'm so old that and had mach 3 so long back when i bought mach 3 it was like 150 bucks and it's been 175 for a long time <laughs> and I, I think it still is i'm not sure but uh, Ernest says the art of upsell. <laughs> yeah. Any yeah. idea what controller is in the box? If you're talking about Avid, you'd have to just. Uh, well, the controller part is I don't know about the drivers and all that. I am, you know, I re that thing has run so flawlessly that I. I really haven't really opened that thing. One time I had problems with. Uh, and it was just something came loose, a screw came loose. And there's like a little, uh, I think it's a five volt power supply that powers the um, the warp nine smooth stepper. I think it's five volt, five or five or twelve. I think I think it's five. But anyway, uh, you know, from running it, a, a screw came loose, and that wire, you know, how you you push the wire in it and you tighten down the screw. It was loose, and so if it jiggled just right, it would momentarily knock the power off to that smooth stepper, which made the machine stop. So that's the only thing I've had to do, and that's the only time I've ever had the door on that controller open is to find that loose wire and stick it back in there and then retighten the screw, and I've been running the heck out of it since. Um uh, Aaron wants to know with a smooth step or move more than one axis at a time. Uh, I think it, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, it will. And again, that's why that's why I, I, I can't go from one machine that's that doesn't do that 
to another one that does because I'm constantly trying to jog it. And even when you're just jogging it manually with, you know, with the keys, it's faster if you can move all three axes at once. Than having to move one and stop and then hit the button and yeah. And that's that other one doesn't do that. And I, I don't like it because of that. Uh, no, I'm not working with Mach 4. I'm assuming it would probably work with, it would do it with Mach 4. I'm using Mach 3. Like I said, they tried to sell me Mach 4, and I said, no, I don't need that. And they're like, well, what are you going to use? I'm like, well. Mach 3. <laughs> Mach 3. I got, you know, and they're like, oh, that's all. I'm, no, don't give me that. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> I've been using Mach 3 for probably 15 years now or so. So, I mean, I run, I run this thing tonight with it. So, all right, we're going to get out of here. We've been on there an hour and 20 minutes. I don't see any more. Um, I don't see any more questions. Cool. And I hope, uh, I got a feeling somebody will, <laughs> because we really haven't had anybody in the chat that really needed to know all the little stuff we just kind of went over some of that fast so there'll probably be somebody come back and watch this and go well he didn't really show that stuff but we've shown it before um i've done two or three i think three other gat and cnc lives probably a year ago because i know we did two of them on this breakout board and i think we did one once before with this because this is the last configuration I had set up. Uh, uh, Johnny had a question about the v where the VFD would tie into the board. I'm going to have to, to pass on that one because I don't <laughs> run my VFD tied into the board. Well, on my Avid it does, but again, I didn't do anything. It was already set up that way. Um, and it is it is a nice feature to have to, to run that thing, and then when it stops, the you know gets done, the the sp spindle shuts off and stuff. But on my get, and I have a little remote box that I use. I it's got a little rheostat and uh, or potentiometer, whatever you want to call it, and then a power button. And then my VFD box is mounted on the back wall behind the machine. And it's where I can see the, uh, the RPM so I can turn it up to uh, whatever I want. And I just, I don't really have any reason to change it on the GAT. But I'm the wrong one to ask that because I didn't, I, I haven't done that. So I'm not going to try to answer that. And again, this session tonight was to try to stick to the basics. I just want to help people that, that are stuck at this point, you know, to finish this little bit of wire and to get their machine up and go, you know, we didn't even cover. I had some, some other props out here. I had, uh, where I could show you how to connect the touch plate. I got two different little touch plates here. Uh, what else have I got? Oh, I got, le uh, limit switches. I got three, uh, three of them tied together. But, I mean, all this stuff is so simple. It's two wires. That's all it is. And, you know, if anybody want to know, I'd show them. But it's really stupid simple. I mean, you got a place for two wires on the breakout board, and you hook, hook them in there. <laughs> and it really don't matter which way you put them on there because they're with the limit switches and the touch plate, you're just completing the circuit. So. They're going to work regardless. Just You just have to set up the pin in Mach 3, uh, whether it's active low or active high. Uh, but And I also didn't mention I've got one thing I do have connected. And this, like I said, this is how simple it is. I mean, let me up, pull that other camera back up real quick. Okay. And let me get. What am I doing here? Okay. Now, you you can't see what I'm 
point down here. But if you look over here on the bottom right hand corner, see, I got an E stop right here. And there's a white and a yellow wire. And that's the only two other wires you see going to this breakout board. And one of them's basically going to the, the thing marked five volt, and the other one is going to the pin. So, I mean, there's only two places, you know, two spots to put a wire. One's the pin number, and the other one on that particular board says 5V on it or 5 volt. And that's it. You just put them in there, and then you have to make sure you have the right pin. Like, I think, I don't remember what that's set up for. I think it's uh, pin number 10, I believe. So, um, you have it, have it set up for pin 10 and Mach 3, and boom, it works. There's not, not really much to all of that stuff before. I know a long time ago, I used to... When I had my very first CNC, I ran that thing for years without a touch plate, without a homing switch, without anything. I'd use a piece of paper to set the Z. I would just hit reference all home, which would basically just zero everything out. I knew my table was only so big. I didn't have to worry about, you know, running off the table. I mean, that's just, that's on you if you, if you do that, you should know how big your project is and how big you can cut. Um, but once I, again, I started doing some of this wiring stuff so that I could show other people because I kept getting questions like, how do you do this? How do you do this? And I'm like, well, I'm going to have to learn myself so that I can share that information. But then when I did it, I'm like, man, these limit switches are so easy. The way I have these set up, oh, I lost... Hold on, I lost my buddy here. <laughs> the way I had this example is there's a red, a long red and a black wire. And I have these set where you could uh, just use one pin. So you could put this red and black wire, for example, into, say, pin 15. And then you would put, now these have little short wires, but obviously you would have one over on the X, and one over on the Y, and one on the Z. But no matter which one of them trips, it's going to stop it. And when you look at the diagnostic page in Mach 3, all three lights are going to show up. But it's pretty easy to figure out which over travel you've gone on, you know. So you can do it that way and just use one pin. Or... You can go crazy and put three switches separately. Like, say, use, um, I don't know, 10, 11, 12, or 12, 13, and 15, whatever, you know, three different pins and do it that way. And you can also, if you have a limit switch, for example, the way I use my GATT and CNC, I have three switches. One at the top of the Z. And I use that for over travel and homing. Same switch. Same thing on the X. I got one only in the positive direction. Because that's the way I home mine. I home mine to the right and back. So I have it. One switch over on the positive direction. And it's an over travel and a homing switch combined. You can use it for either one. Same thing on the Y. I've got one on the right-hand side towards the back. Same thing. It'll home, use it, use it as a homing switch, but if I travel, over-travel, it'll also stop as a limit switch. It's all how you configure Mach 3. I think we've, uh, we keep blabbing on here. We're an hour and a half now. <laughs> all right. I hope somebody got something out of this. If you didn't, if anybody ever wants to, uh, you know, if maybe you're shy and don't want to get on here and say you're having trouble, send me a private email. I can do like me and Ryan are right now. I can pull it, pull you in the stream yard, do a private thing where it's not broadcast anywhere and walk you through some of this stuff. Take about five minutes from it. And I'm happy to do that if anybody's. Uh, 
you know, trying to figure out some of this stuff. Now, if you having said that, I I like the simple stuff. So if you've got some kind of, you know, Chinese outfit that nobody else has, I'm not sure I can help you. <laughs> I know the easy stuff. All right, I guess we're going to get out of here. Dang, Rob's watching a, a no-hitter in the ninth. And you're on here? What are you doing? Multitasking. <laughs> <laughs> Man. All right. Uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I'm glad we had at least a few people. I see we got one thumbs down, so somebody wasn't happy. <laughs> But that's all right. All counts the same. Anyway, uh, thank you all for the, if, you know, if we need to do more of these, I say we because I'm drafting my buddy Ryan here. He's done such a bang up job tonight that he's going to get the job full time if we, if we need to do this. But um, if you really look hard enough on go to YouTube, put Dave Gatton in the search bar and then put laser touch play. You know, whatever I've probably already done a video on it or a live stream. So that's why I don't do them much anymore, except coffee sessions. I like to drink coffee. So, all right, well, we're going to get out of here. Let me get over here to the button so I can go out in style here. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in, and uh, thank you, Ryan, for helping me tonight. Uh, remember, you uh, don't have to bail when I, I hit the button here. You know the drill. All right, we'll see you, everybody. Good night.